ready to launch. Freefall lifeboat, safe, reliable, and fast to launch. It is built in two versions: the standard freefall lifeboat for dry cargo ships, and a version for tankers with special accessory equipment. So that it may effectively fulfil its intended mission, the saving of lives, it is important that everyone on board be familiar with the lifeboat and its use. This film is designed to make a contribution to this. It is no substitute for training in the use of the boat, the davits, and the release hook, or familiarity with the various operating instructions. However, it does complement these. Let us begin by taking a closer look at the lifeboat. It is built for dry cargo ships and tankers, in sizes between 6.0 and 8.5 meters. It can accommodate between 19 and a maximum of 40 persons. The version comes equipped with a water spray unit and an emergency air supply system. This special equipment will be shown and explained separately at the end of the film. Our freefall lifeboat offers maximum safety. Depending on the configuration, launches with a side list of up to 30 degrees may be safely carried out. The nearly round cross section effectively prevents any deformation in shape. This provides a high degree of safety, even when the boat enters the water awkwardly with corresponding water impact. At the aft of the ship, there's a platform for helicopter rescue. The propeller is shielded with a nozzle rudder for good maneuverability. Now let us take a look at the inside of the lifeboat. Body contoured GRP seats with closed cell phone padding, as well as pelvis and shoulder safety belts, provide optimal protection for the crew. The boat's floor covering has a non-slip texture for sure footing, even in inclined stowage position, and the ale has additionally moulded steps. A water-cooled diesel motor is fitted under the boat's floor and may be started and controlled by the helmsman. Other operating equipment and accessories, such as water canisters, equipment, and emergency rations, are also to be found under the deck. Release is accomplished by a single release lever operated by the helmsman. The release device opens, and the boat begins its freefall down to the water. Now that you've become acquainted with our freefall lifeboat, the general procedure for abandoning ship will be shown. Of course, the conditions on individual ships may vary, as may the situations under which ships are abandoned. It is important that attention be paid to the following points. Has the release hook been closed correctly? Has the safety bolt been inserted and secured? If not, the boat may be lost. Before opening the door, remove the safety bolt and secure it in the door holder. Please note these steps; they are extremely important. After the signal to abandon ship has been given, proceed to the muster station, fully clothed with sturdy shoes and a life vest. Open the sidewise lashing plates with the operation wires.
remove the charging cable if there is one. If there isn't, then the boat is equipped with solar cells. Check if the eyes of the hoisting wires are hanging in their support at the steering dome and are secured with a strap. Make sure that the lifeline is tied to the canopy. Check if the boat and the launching way are free of obstacles and lashings and that after its removal, the release safety bolt has been secured in the support on the door. Get into the boat and take your place. Do not wear a rigid life vest because of the danger of injury. Instead, lay it on your knee. Now, put your arms under the shoulder straps and fasten the safety belt by pushing the square ring onto the pelican hooks. Close the pelican hooks and tighten the belt by pulling at the loose end. Always use the same seat and adjust the seat belt to your size. At launch, press yourself into your seat using the grips to the front of or at the side of your seat and press your head against the headrest. If no grips are available, grasp your shoulder straps and brace yourself. The door of the lifeboat is now closed. The helmsman selects battery 1 or battery 2 with the battery selector switch. Before launch, the helmsman checks the safety belts of all persons on board. The catches of all hatchways, doors and openings and secures any free objects. After these controls have been carried out, the helmsman takes his place, fastens his seat belt, and makes certain that the rudder is aligned amidships and that the surface of the water is free of obstacles. He closes the bypass valve and removes the safety pin at the release lever. The lifeboat is now ready to launch. The helmsman now announces, ready to launch. After the launch, the helmsman starts the motor as now shown. Engine control lever set to half speed forwards while the neutral gear button is pressed. The motor control panel is switched on. The start button is pressed until the motor starts. Engine control lever back to neutral until the button pops up. Then push the engine control lever forwards. Note. During all gear shifting operations, always keep the gear in neutral for a few seconds to avoid damaging the transmission or the engine control lever unit. Stay at safe distance from the mothership. In case of rough seas, a sea anchor can be fastened to the fore lifting eye. To do this, open the hatch and fasten the sea anchor on the front shackle. Take the anchor out and close the hatch as shown. In case of good weather, the aft door may be left open to provide fresh air. Before showing how the boat is brought back on board, we show the previous steps again in abbreviated form. Go to the muster station quickly but orderly. Open the lashing plates. Remove the charging cable if there is one, otherwise the boat is equipped with solar cells. Check the hoisting wires. Check the lifeline. Are the boat and launching way free of obstacles? Is the safety bolt inserted and secured? Has the release hook been correctly closed? Before opening the door, secure the safety bolt in the support on the door. 
Get into the boat and fasten your seatbelt correctly. Hands on the grips, head pressed to the headrest. The door is closed. Battery 1 or 2 is selected with the battery switch. Check the seat belts of all persons. Close the hatches, doors and other openings. The helmsman makes certain that the rudder is aligned amidships and that the surface of the water is free of obstacles. He closes the bypass valve and removes the safety pin from the release lever. The helmsman now announces ready to launch. The motor is started. This is how the sea anchor is hauled up. After this brief recapping, we show how the lifeboat is to be returned to the mothership. Bringing the lifeboat back on board is extremely difficult in rough seas. It should be done only in port or on quiet seas with a mothership not in motion. The boat is manoeuvred under the crane or David. During the raising process, no more than three persons with seat belts fastened may be on board the lifeboat. The release lever must be secured. Make sure that the bypass valve of the release device is open and that the hydraulic cylinder is completely retracted. The hoisting wire eyes are attached to the davit or crane hooks from the platform deck. The sidewise lashing plates of the track must be open, that is, pointing downwards. The boat is recovered to the trackway according to the David and respectively the crane manual. Once again, when hoisting, the crew should be seated with seat belts fastened. The retaining chain is now hung into the release hook, which is pulled up to close it. Make sure that the hydraulic cylinder is completely retracted and that the hook lies approximately 15 millimeters on the pole. This is necessary for the insertion and securing of the safety bolt. The boat must be positioned slack so that the launching rails lie entirely on the rollers before the retaining chain takes up the load and becomes taut. This is important since otherwise the launching rails in the vicinity of the roller area may be damaged. Remove the hoisting eyes from the David, respectively from the crane hooks, hang them into the support at the helmsman dome and secure it with the belts. And turn the battery off. Make sure that the rudder is in mid position. Stow away all loose equipment and clear out everything that does not belong to the boat, for example VHF transmitters, SART, etc. Refill fuel, air, and so on. The door is closed. Insert the safety bolt and secure it. Please pay attention to the instruction signs. Secure the sidewise lashing plates with their operation wires. If there is one, attach the charging cable. We will now give you a short sketch of how the lifeboat is brought back on board. Maneuver the boat under the crane or David. The release lever must be secured. Is the bypass valve of the release device open and is the hydraulic cylinder completely retracted? Hang the hoisting wire eyes into the David, respectively the crane hooks. The sidewise lashing plate must be open, pointing downwards. The boat is set into the launching way according to the David manual. The chain is now hung into the release hook which is pulled up to close it. Make sure that the hydraulic cylinder is completely retracted and that the hook lies approximately 15 millimeters on the pole. This is necessary for the insertion and securing of the safety bolt. The boat must be positioned slack so that the launching rails lie entirely on the rollers before the retaining chain takes up the load and becomes taut. This is important since otherwise the launching rails in the vicinity of the roller area may be damaged. Remove the hoisting eyes from the David, respectively from the crane hooks, 
Hang them into the support and secure it with the belts. Turn the battery off. Make sure that the rudder is in mid position. Store loose objects. Clear out everything that does not belong to the boat. Refill fuel and other expended items. Close the door. Insert the safety bolts. Secure the sidewise lashing plate with lashings. Reconnect the charging cable if there is one. Before taking up the launching way, we would like to draw your attention to the signs on and in the boat and ask that you pay attention to these signs. They're easy to understand and will help you in familiarizing yourself with the use of the boat. Let's take a look at the launching way. It consists of square steel tubes with welded on rollers. The rollers are made of polyamide, run on stainless steel axes and are self-lubricating and therefore maintenance free. We now turn to the lashings of the lifeboat. It is fastened by a connecting chain to the launching way. The 15 degree inclination of the retaining chain secures the boat and prevents sudden vertical movements in rough seas. One lashing plate on each side prevents upward vertical movement. Now we come to the accessory equipment for freefall lifeboats of type GART, the version for tankers mentioned at the beginning. After the signal to abandon ship has been given, the following points must be observed in addition to the operating steps already shown. Remove anything on the outside of the boat that could be an obstruction to the water spray of the spray plant, for example, ropes, fenders, dirt and grease. The water spray unit completely covers the surface of the tanker's lifeboat with a curtain of water. This allows the boat to move through surface fire without excessive damage and also aids in cooling the interior of the boat. The temperature will not rise much for approximately 10 minutes. Open the large seawater valve with a lever parallel to the pipeline which is under the floor in front of the spray pump and the motor. Make certain that the bypass valve is open, otherwise the pump will run without water and be damaged. The pump of the water spray unit is permanently coupled to the motor with a coupling or V-belt and runs continuously with it. The valves of all air bottles are opened. The air bottles are integrated in the inner shell of the boat. The discharge valve of the air unit must still be closed. The lever is transverse. The cap for the filling connection must be screwed on. When the hatches and doors have been closed after embarking, the air flap in the aft door must be closed, as well as ventilators, if any are present. After the motor has been started and the ventilators closed, the helmsman opens the ventilation unit's outlet. Sufficient air for 10 minutes of breathing flows into the interior of the boat. After passing through fire, or if the air bottles are empty, and the high-pressure manometer would then read approximately 10 bars, the air flap of the aft door must be opened again, otherwise there's danger of suffocation. Please read the appropriate stickers. The water spray unit is shut down by closing the seawater valve. The bypass valve remains open. As with the standard version, after launching, the boat should be brought back on board in a proper manner, and then fastened down, loose objects stowed away, and as shown here, the fuel and air supply refilled. This film was intended to provide a visual supplement to the specifications, operating instructions and handbooks.
The Fusma Freefall Lifeboat. Safe, convenient and fast to launch.